Well, a quick check on the Asian markets. The Nikkei continues to hold on to gains. It's up close to around half a percent, so it's holding on to some gains. But the other few markets, uh, the Kospi has dipped into the red. Even I think the Shanghai market, that the first stick was in the green, that as well has moved into the red. So let's pull up uh, the Shanghai as well as uh, the Hang Seng should come up for you. Some red on the screen out there. Though the SGX Nifty continues to suggest that, in fact, we are uh, bracing ourselves to the positive start, maybe a 2025 point, point bump up is what we could brace ourselves for. But moving on then, Len, let's talk about stocks. Lupin will be in focus today as its uh, CFO, Mr. Ramesh Swaminathan, stepped down uh, yesterday, in fact. Uh, Ekta is with us. Ekta, came as a surprise? Well, definitely, uh, it has definitely come as a surprise, but it's not something which is completely untoward or, you know, something which is uh, completely controversial. So, yes, uh, Mr. Ramesh Swaminathan has been with Lupin since the past 12 years. He's been a CFO, I understand, for two decades or some uh, two decades, but he became a synonymous name in terms of representing Lupin. So, he was the key person to talk to, etc. And hence, that's why it's come as a surprise because he was one of the key people uh, that investors as well as say the media interacted with so he to a certain extent became the face of lupin separately i just want to add that yesterday when the resignation came in the evening it took everybody by surprise because uh, mr ramesh was in fact interacting with in investors as well as uh, you know select media um uh, the whole of yesterday so it wasn't there, there wasn't any sort of whiff of anything that could have happened in terms of a resignation so I think that's what caught everybody on the back foot that this resignation came as a surprise but was there was it because of an internal strife no my sources tell me that in fact Mr. Ramesh Swaminathan is looking to pursue opportunities outside pharmaceuticals and that we should probably know about those opportunities very soon I just want to point out that you know in the past also we've seen these kind of uh, transitions take place and the one which comes to mind the most uh, prominently is uh, Umang Vora uh, who is now the CEO and heading Sipla. He was the CFO at Dr. Reddy's for a very long time. So this is probably a transition which would be um, you know quite natural for somebody like Mr. S. Ramesh but since he was the face of Lupin and uh, you know people associated him with Lupin quite distinctly I think then uh, it would probably come as a bit of a negative for Lupin. Separately, it also points to the fact that maybe uh, opportunities are dwindling a little bit in the pharmaceutical space as compared to earlier because of the kind of challenges the generic companies are facing. Okay, Ikta, so not necessarily any controversy there when it comes to Lupin, but yesterday there was some controversial note on Sun Pharma as well and that's the reason the stock was under pressure yesterday. Uh, some clarification coming in from the company now? Uh, well, yes, uh, there is a clarification which is coming from Sun Pharmaceuticals with regards to all of, uh, you know, with regards to the news yesterday. Uh, they have mentioned that, um, uh, you know, all of this information, in fact, is dated. It goes back around 10 to 15 odd years. And uh, they understand that someone has compiled and circulated information about Sun Pharma. The info is already available in public domain at this point, and it's portrayed to indicate that something inappropriate was done. This a lot of the information is 10 to 15 years old, so it's dated. And Sun believes that there are there they are in compliance with legal and regulatory provisions. So this is the clarification which is coming for Sun Pharma. But uh, the point about the clarification also is that they haven't denied any of the uh, or any of the allegations or any of the details within that report. So I think maybe that could weigh or continue to weigh on sentiment. And separately, reports indicate that Sun Pharma is closing its cranberry plant in New Jersey. The company has pointed to a lot of, you know, cost-cutting initiatives, etc. So this would be in line, but uh, there would be a layoff of around 100 workers and this would be something that would now uh, culminate. Okay, all right. Thanks so much for that, Ekta. Well, moving on then, power, shipping and sugar companies, they have challenged the Reserve Bank of India's February 12th circular and the case is coming up for hearing today. Lata Mangirej joins us uh, to run us through all those details. Morning, Lata. Run us through those details. Oh, well, just a brief background. Uh, if you remember, the February 12th circular, passed on February 12th this year, said that uh, com identified about uh, uh, you know 30 odd companies which have loans over 2,000 crore and are stressed and said that if they're not resolved in six months, they will have to be taken to the NCLT. Many of them were power companies, and in various courts, they had challenged uh, uh, the Reserve Bank's circular. Shipping companies, more notably, I think, Reliance Naval, had also challenged, and some sugar companies had also challenged. The Supreme Court decided to hear all those cases together, 
and that is the hearing that's coming up today. It was already heard on November 13th and then pushed for the next hearing now. At the moment, the circular is stayed. But the Supreme Court on that day uh, identified three kinds of cases. One set of challenges were challenging the validity of the IBC, the bankruptcy code itself. The other set were challenging the constitutional validity of the Federal circular. And there were power companies which were not challenging the validity of the circular, but merely asking for an exemption for themselves. Now, today, the hearing of all this will start. It may take a couple of days or more because there are quite a few litigants. But uh, it's just that all, the, uh, all those who are challenging, both on terms of constitutional validity and in terms of uh, uh, the uh, exceptions they seek within the circular, will be heard today. Uh, there is no order. It can, uh, uh, all the litigants are going to be uh, are going to start their presentations today. Okay, Lata, thank you so much for that. So maybe we won't hear the final verdict on that, but an important case that we need to track. Moving on then, the high-pitched battle for SR Steel continues. The case will be heard in the Ahmedabad today to hear pleas of various creditors against Arcelor's bid. The promoters of SR Steel are likely to make a last-ditch attempt to rescue the company.